Welcome back to Golden Rule Radio, and this week Robert and I are here to dive right into the market, sitting on the heels of one of the biggest updates I think I've ever seen in the platinum price, moving up almost 5% in a single day today. So we will definitely get into the platinum pricing, the other white metals, but let's kick it off with the yellow one first, gold. What's gold doing, Robert? Well, gold's been strong. Uh, it's still holding above 1500 1540 today, just below it. And something's clearly changed in the global markets in the last couple of months. Yeah, you think? Clearly changed. Um, what kind of buying does it take to drive gold from 1270 to where we are now at 1500 in only two months? What, what, what does it take? It takes institutional buying. And I think that's what's happened, as well as obviously what has driven that, I think, is the negative yields in the bond markets around the world. Um, money's looking for somewhere safe to be. And so gold has really caught the bid in the last couple of months. Obviously, our listeners know that. But it's not wanting to show weakness here. It's strong. It's above 1500 We had a little bit of a pullback down to 1490 on the last move. But, I mean, it has clearly changed and, and turned a corner here. Sure. We pointed out uh, this kind of stair-stepping up we seem to be doing where I hinted we may be seeing the second of maybe like a three waves Elliott pattern building. Um, but the the big argument had to be that we talked about last week is we had to push above that like 1535 high. We had been stuck in that range. Well, and that happened this week. We did get up into the 1550s. So I'm looking back in the charts, back to like 2011 to 2013, where we're at this low point uh, in that trading range. And there's a little shoulder there right before things fell off the table in uh, April of 2013. And that's right around 1600, you know, low, uh, low 1605-ish, maybe 16 and a quarter. So there's, there's a little bump there where we could see a little bit of pullback. Uh, but that's, that's begging the question of are there standing orders? You know, have, have people had standing sell orders at those prices? Or are they going to look at those prices and place some standing sell orders? Or is the general public or the trader even involved in the market at this point, like you brought up? Are we just seeing the opening shots fired by the institutional traders? Because when the general public gets involved and this market goes manic, which I don't think it has yet, but when that happens, we're not talking two or 300 bucks over the course of a few months like we've already seen. We're talking $1,000 over the course of six or 12 months. Yeah, and there's different phases to a bull market. I think we've just begun and seen the first phase of this new cyclical gold bull market. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I'd completely agree. Yeah. This is so, 2006 all over again. Sure. You know, and, and it's taken a while to get here. You know, bottoming in late 2015, nobody knew that that was the actual bottom. You know, you could speculate on it. And we haven't really even been able to determine that that was the bottom, I don't think, until we've had this last couple month move, pushing it up into the 1500s. I mean, that's clearly turned a corner. Gold has definitely been leading the charge, which I think adds even more strength to your argument that this is almost purely institutional investing at this point. Yep. So we've seen the first phase. This next phase would be a, a larger volume of investors coming into it. And so I think what's happened this first phase, now gold's on the radar. Gold's become attractive. People are now asking about it and wondering about it and wanting to be into it. And probably if you're sitting on the sidelines, you're th saying, I want to be into it, but I'd like to buy it cheaper. I don't know that you're going to get much cheaper. Or even if you can buy it cheaper, we're not talking substantial numbers here. I right. mean, in the long run, if gold's going to 3,500 on this move, what's 50 bucks up or down at this point? So- on the other hand, with gold leading the charge, I think it's fair to say, you know, we've we've been arguing for a long time that when some of these other metals start to play catch up, you want to make sure you'd already been in those markets. So if we can transition over to the white metals, which I hinted at a moment ago, platinum up 5% or almost 5% just today, silver pushing to the highest price in two years. You know, silver in a few days has taken out years worth of up and down noise. So seeing these white metals start to make uh, pretty aggressive leaps and bounds, single day leaps and bounds, uh, it's, it's encouraging for me to see uh, some of these more investment minded or even industrial minded assets, 
that, I think, is the general public starting to wake up. Yeah, what did we say last week? Uh, I think I said, I'm going to go buy platinum. Well, I did. And thank goodness I did, because here we are up 50 bucks from about where that call was made last week. And that's how quickly we can see these metals move. The ratios are out of balance with platinum gold, platinum palladium. Obviously, we've talked about that on the show for <laughs> Ever. Ever. <laughs> so. And uh, and obviously gold-silver ratio is high. And so it's starting to move with silver launching higher. And we're not just talking about these just as kind of pie in the sky. We're actually placing money into ounces um, for these moves that we're just now starting to see. I think we're on the cusp of a next big big metals cyclical bull market. Right. And that's with silver up almost 30% just in the last three months. And we mentioned what platinum did today. You know, that ratio, you mentioned the ratio, gold silver ratio has gone from 93 down to as of today, 84 in two months. So that's a 10% gain on gold. As amazing as gold has been doing over the last couple months, silver's beating it by 10%. Platinum palladium from 0.5 to 0.6, platinum to gold. 0.5 to 0.6. So we can see these white metals making up ground against the uh, the yellow overseer of all things metallic. Beyond the four major precious metals, here we are with rhodium at $4,500. I'm going to kick myself again for not buying it at $600, $700, but uh, it's actually gained a headline news on Bloomberg today, I saw. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see some of these other uh, platinum group metals like rhodium and iridium, if they're going to follow suit with platinum uh, or if they're going to continue to trade as industrial metals alongside palladium. Now, palladium uh, didn't do what the other metals have done this week, and, and that's been expected. You know, we've seen that while the precious metals, uh, the more currency-minded precious metals like gold and silver were going down, even platinum going down, palladium obviously on a rise to its highest prices ever. So it's not surprising to see it moving alongside with the other industrial metals. So I'll be interested to see how that whole platinum group metal um, collection prices out as platinum is moving up and down itself over the next year or two. Are they going to follow suit? Could palladium go to 2,000, 2,500 an ounce? Um, we'll have to see. But I do think What's most important here is the platinum to palladium ratio and how that plays out and where the opportunity best presents itself in those metals. The dollar hasn't done a whole lot. It's still holding around 98, as well as the S&P is stuck in a range oscillating between that low uh, on the initial big drop and then uh, the high being around 29, what, 20. Um, It is going to break one way. Whichever way the S&P breaks out of this range is going to indicate which mar- which way the metals are going to go, which way the, the bond market's going to go, those safe havens. And so we're going to be watching the S&P really closely to see which way it breaks out of here. Yeah, the tentative nature of some of these markets is pretty apparent. I mean, the dollar is going up, but it's stuck in this pretty tight trading range and just sort of slowly inching up slightly more than it's coming back down, you know, and the euro on the other side is doing the exact exact opposite. It's it's in a trading range, but it's pushing down. You know, the Dow is arguably, eh, you get rid of last December and the Dow is arguably still rising because uh, it is putting in higher highs, but it's just right in between that that longer term trading range. So uh, I think uh, I think the markets are waiting to see, like you said, some type of event that ends up giving us a clear determined uh, push either up or down. Uh, now, my argument would be you got to have buyers coming in in order to get that price to go higher. You got to have buyers outweighing sellers. And we're not seeing that right now. So even though we haven't had a price fall off yet, specifically with like the S&P or the Dow Industrials, I personally think it's more likely at this point without something else coming in to boost that market to continue to increase buying, I don't see it happening. Now you compare that to the transports, the transports have actually, as of today, inch below the June lows and actually reaching almost the lowest price for the year or the lowest price since the middle of January in the Dow transports. Now, the transports were never able to get back up and post a higher high. The transports are bearish, period. And the transports, if they continue down, and I would argue just here within the next day or two, if we see lower prices in the next day or two, 
that market's turning down and it's turning down soon. And I've, I've said this a hundred times, it's not mine, but I love it. And it's the idea that if the transports aren't leading the industrials, if you're not shipping the products, you're not selling the products. So if we're not shipping goods across the U.S. for sale, then it's irrelevant what the industrials are doing. They're not actually producing and selling anything. They're just gambling on their stock price at this point. I don't like owning companies based on leveraged stock investing. I like owning value companies. And also keep in mind with those of you who are invested in the equities market and long the equities market, either through your 401k or a brokerage account, but especially in a retirement account, if you've just been letting this thing ride, and, and have liked it, I mean, you have to understand a market goes down a lot faster than it's come up. That's right. And if we're on the edge, if we've truly put in the top in the equities market, which is possible relative to what the Dow transports are doing, if we've done that, this is a serious time right now where we are. If it starts rolling over, you don't want to be long equities. No. So if it rolls over, metals and safe havens are going to continue to rally. And so again, we're going to be watching the S&P, which way it breaks out of this, but pay attention and be ready to act because if it does roll over, you do not want to be sitting in a 401k or IRA, just sitting there letting it ride in a mutual fund with a bunch of stocks or just a, a bunch of stocks in general. Yeah, Robert, it's a really good point that you do see these major market cycles take place. And that's why over the last year or so, we've been sitting down with our clients and positioning their overall portfolios uh, first to get ready to move out of some of those equity positions when it's necessary to do so. And most importantly, to set up a preservative position in things like precious metals so that not only can you take advantage of some of the growth that we've already started to see, but avoid some of the detrimental losses you can take if you weren't ready to take action when the stock market does roll over. So even if you just want to talk about building a plan going forward, I'd highly recommend you give us a call like we've done with a number of our uh, clients over the last year or so and discuss your portfolio with one of our advisors. That does it this week. Thank you for listening. Miles, what should they follow? Well, you can certainly follow us on Twitter at ICA Gold. Head on over to our website, McIlvaney.com. Facebook is McIlvaney Financial. Or as always, scroll down a little bit, click that subscribe button, ring the bell to get notifications, and most importantly, give Robert, myself, or one of the advisors at McIlvaney ICA a call at 1-800-525-9556, and we can discuss your personal portfolio. Thanks for listening. Have a great week.